Welcome to this course. Thank you for being here. In this course, you will learn a lot about PHP. And in this course, you will learn prepared statement and will build a real world project with prepared statement. Then you will learn something called PDO or PHP data object. And with it also will build the same project we built with prepared statement, right? Then you learn something called URL rewriting. And then in the final section, We'll start building a real world website. All right, so let's see what we'll build the project. And this is the project we'll build with prepared statement and also with PDO or PHP data object, right? Let's see how it works. First, if we leave empty this field, we try to add new user. All right, field can't be blank, right? So let's say first name Mark and let's leave this email field blank. Okay, it says field can be blank. All right. So here let's say mark and email mark at the rate gmail.com add new user all right new user added here and let's try using at john john email let's say john at the rate gmail.com add new user all right so user added and we can also delete the user okay now the this user is deleted if we can edit the user let's click on edit all right here on edit page let's say gen updated click on submit all right see that gen updated right so if we leave any of the field empty let's click on submit field can't be blank all right and another important thing we can't visit this page or this edit user.php by just sending get request that means by changing url let's back to index page reload if we just try to go to let's say edit user.php we're no longer able to go to that page all right it's a security and this is the project will be built with prepared statement and also with psp data object and it will be a great practice for learning prepared statement and PDO that means PSP data object and then in the final part and this awesome looking website will be built in this course so let's see how it works so first this is the home page and here I have some post and we can navigate around page by just this pagination right and we can go back and forth and we're currently showing here three posts per page and we can customize it how many pages or how many posts we want to per page right and we have also here something's called navigation option or navigation link and here we can we can get post or see post by category all right if we click here it will return to this this html5 post or if we click on javascript it leave us it take us to this javascript post and here's this also um, it is active uh, active navigation link here all right so we can search here also and to search for javascript all right it's nothing found there right so let's say php all right it's two post found there right if we say nothing there so all it's found there and we can also navigate here all right so that's cool part right and we can visit single post per post detail screen this is post detail screen here now currently no comment let's say john and here hello okay submit now you see this is your one comment here that's pretty easy and the cool part of this project is the backend let's see the backend here type admin and we need to authenticate the user all right the only admin can visit the backend so let's use something wrong credentials sign in and that's wrong credential right the credential need to be perfect match we're going to validate in database right so email all right mda barrick and sign in or right, everything correct now we are on the backend here we can add new post we can delete post we can edit post we can view the comment or delete the comment and we can go to the categories we can add new category we can edit categories right so let's now add a new post here let's say 
let's see here this eat new post created by Barik. Let's say this category name is NodeJet and status published choose photo. Let's choose the photo here. I'm going to choose NodeJet and here let's say here's some content will go. To. I just copy I'm going to copy it and just paste it a couple of times. I just submit it. All right, post successfully created. And let's go back to the blog. All right, localhost slash blog and node it. All right, this is a new post. It's created by Barry. If we click here, it takes us to this to this single post page. We can comment here. Let's say Barry. Let's say awesome post. Submit. All right, it just submitted the post right there. Okay, cool. And let's see here, just reload. We have one comment on this post, right? If you click on one here, let's see, this is the post. If you click, it will take us to the blog post. Awesome, right? You can comment as many comments as you want. And here you can also delete the, all right, comments. Now if you reload it, there's no comments, all right? So, Okay, let's edit the post. Eat this post. I'm going to just change this publish to draft. Okay. This is HTML5 category post. And here I could say just update post. And here on the page, let's say blog and go to HTML5. All right. It has just two posts now. Okay. Now let's make this post draft. New post. All right, so new post this one maybe edit and status dropped and everything else before and reload. All right, this post gone. Awesome, right? So we can also delete the post. Let's say I'm gonna delete this. This this is new post on this category PHP. All right, first let's see on PHP category. This is new post. Let's delete the post. All right. So delete. Okay, just reload here. So that this post do not exist anymore. And let's go to our categories. And here let's add a new category called JavaScript, or let's say it's called algorithm. THM algorithm. We add new category there, then it add it right. You can edit this. Let's call it data structure and algorithm just update category now it's updated right now let's go back to our admin and here let's try to edit this post let's say this post and just click here see that it dynamic category right you can select this category let's select the category there let's change the photo i'm going to change the photo to let's say this one no worry about photo just update okay let's go there reload and this is the categories dynamic category we click here this is the new post of this category showing up here how cool it is right so this is all about this website in this course we'll build this awesome website from complete scratch now just enroll this course and let's start learning building website with PHP, PDU, and MySQL. See you inside. Before we can get started with this course, we need to have installed some software. And the process exactly really the same for all operating systems. So let's go ahead and download them. First software, we're gonna download each jump. Jump is all-in-one built-in package that contains FRC, PHP, and MySQL. Just head over to this link frcfriendsorg slash download.html and download it depending on your operating system. And the next software, a text editor. In this course, I will use a text editor called Visual Studio Code. It's a very popular text editor and it's backed by Microsoft. 
if you want to use other text editor like sublime brackets or at home please go with that but in this course i will use visual studio code and the very last software we need to download a web browser in this course i will use a browser called google chrome and it's very popular you can use other browser as well like Mozilla Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever, right? Just download and install this software. Jump, a text reader, and web browser. Alright, now I assume you have installed the software I mentioned. Now let's hit on window key on your keyboard and scroll down and here open it and here jump counter panel. Just wait a bit and this window will look like this for window user. Now start FRC and MySQL and this window will look like in Mac like this. And from here just go to manage server tab and from this tab manage server just select MySQL database and start and select FRC web server and start. It the start button of fade out because it's already running. Right? And now let's open up web browser and type your localhost and hit enter. Welcome to Jamp. We have installed Jamp successfully. And this window not need to be exactly same. But once you see something, that means you have installed them on a computer successfully. Now let's test for MySQL localhost slash PHP my admin. Just wait a bit, it will take a little time. Alright, so it's working. For first time, you need to log in. Huge root as username and leave virtual field for blank all right now we can start writing PHP code so let's move on and I will see you in the next video what are prepare statements prepare statements work in two phrases first page is called preparation page and second phrase is called execution phrase. In preparation page an SQL statement template is created and sent to the database and certain values are left unspecified it's called parameters. In the right hand side insert into user so user id is equal to question mark. The question mark indicates here parameters. In a regular query we use something like that user id is equal to one two or something else. The database parse compiles and performs query optimization on the SQL statement template and stores the result without executing it. And in the execution phase, at a later time, the applications bind the values to the parameters and the database executes the statement. The application may execute the statement as many times as it wants with a different values. Right? Advantage of prepared statement It's a bit faster because it reduces parsing time as the preparation on the query is done only once. Although the statement is executed multiple times. Bound parameters minimize bandwidth to the server as you need to send only the parameters each time and not the whole query. Right? It saves our bandwidth. And prepared statements are very useful against SQL injections. Prepared statements come with a new world of security. Right? Alright. So let's start writing PHP code. Very first, go to local C drive and from here jump folder and from here HD docs. And here let's create a brand new folder. I'm going to name it let's say prepared statement prepared statement all right 
and now I'm going to open this folder in Visual Studio Code. Alright. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. I'm going to create a new file dbhp for a database connection. Opening PSP tag and closing PSP tag. In between here, let's create a variable. Let's name it con for connection and here MySQL I connect. And this function takes four argument. First localhost, a second argument or database username in this case root and password blank and a database name. Okay, let's prepared name, prepared statement. But first now let's create this database. Okay. And uh, let's go to okay i'm going to open up new tab and type a localhost slash localhost slash php my admin all right before uh you must have to run the foc and mysql and then we're going to create a new folder uh new database here named prepared statement prepared statement and uh, this is actually statement and create and when you're done with it let's create a table called users with four field and here first field name here user id and this is type of integer and it's length 11 and from here uh, let's select the primary key and uh, go and auto increment auto increment mean it's run each time it increment it count and then user name here it's type of burger and it it's length at most two five five right this is a standard format and uh, next up is your email this type of worker and uh, here to five five and uh, the last one is your password and this type is also worker and here to five five and now let's save it Okay, we have created this database table users with four field, you could say. So let's back to our code editor and here this is our database name prepared statement. And now let's check it. If it is success, connection, if it's success, then echo connected. And now let's go to browser and let's try to navigate the folder prepared statement slash db.php p prepared. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, it's connected. Our database connection is now success. But here we are not interested to displaying this connected strings is time. But we want to show something why it failed. Let's say here database connection failed. Simple, right? And now let's try it. And there's no result, right? We see nothing because it's succeed. If we just remove the exclamation mark and it's database connection failed, but it's not true. If this connection is failed, only then it will show. And that's very much it. All right, in this video, we are going to read data from database using prepared statement. Very first, let's create a file named read.php. And in here, opening PHP tag and closing PHP tag. In between, first, require once db.php. 
and then here I'm going to create a SQL statement let's say template let's name it SQL is equal to select select everything from users where user ID is equal to question mark all right and then we're going to create prepared statement prepared statement and here let's call it stmt and here mysqli stmt init it takes one parameters the parameters is your connection variable but you got it from this db.psp file all right then we're going to check if the prepared statement success or let's say prepare a prepared statement that means called preparation all right and then i want to check if if my sqli is the empty prepare it takes two parameters first parameters st empty or statement and second parameters is sql query okay now we want to check failure before check success then here i'm going to use echo failed and else i'm going to just for now just call it echo success okay let's go to browser and let's try to navigate the our project folder localhost slash prepared statement slash read dot php just re reload all right a success so it's working now let's first bind these parameters okay binding parameters okay so first mysql istmt bind prompts prompt and the first the first argument is our statement the second argument what type of value we want to bind here in this case integer right and here we need to reference a variable we can't pass here something like one two or three we need to use your variable so let's name it the variable is here user id and uh, i'm going to define variable right here user id is equal to let's say one this user not exist right now but we will create very soon and this i for integer right and now let's execute the prepared statement executing prepared statement okay my sql istmt just execute and text one argument it's statement all right and then we need to fade some result let's name it variable called result is equal to my sql istmt get result text one parameters okay now i'm going to face result okay i'm going to use a while loop while row is equal to my sql i fade asoc and it takes this result as parameters all right let's now just print all right now i'm going to print the entire associative array what it return this function and then here let's call it print underscore r and then row okay let's run it just refresh it's nothing right because we don't have data let's go to localhost slash php my admin sorry php my admin and from here let's go to our data page prepared statement and i'm going to click on the insert to insert some dummy user 
okay first let's say name john username john2423 gmail.com and password let's say secret and for second user let's say mark email mark 23 at the rate gmail.com and password secret now go okay now structure here okay this is structure and browse now here our two dummy user inserted and let test it out just reload or you see this is array for first user username john email john 23 gmail.com and user password secret so it just display the first user because we're fed here the first one only here we are using this user id like so and if we change it to two then reload it you see this is mark username mark user id two right and from here we can extract the information that we need let's here call echo and row here username okay mark right awesome so that's how we can read data from database using prepared statement here one more important thing let's say here we have user id instead i want to search using username username so username if this is the case then we need to change this username is equal to let's say mark and here we need to change this i i stand for integer but this time we're going to search here using strings so we need to use our string and just need to replace this with username let's try it out reload we got mark let's call it john this time reload it john and that's how we can read data from database using prepared statement all right now we're going to insert user into database so let's get started very first let's create a file here insert.php opening PSP tag and closing PSP tag in between and to import the db.php file so regular ones and then db.php and here let's create a template SQL is equal to in this case insert not select insert into users and you need to define what you want to insert first user name user email then user password right and then you need to define the value what you want to insert there so here values so first question mark question mark and question mark and this question mark represents here placeholder right and we'll bind some value with it when we run this statement right and here create prepared statement and here let's call it stmt my sql i stmt in it it takes one parameters connection that you got it from this db.psp file and then preparation okay and i want to check if mysql i stmt prepare takes two parameter first parameter stmt and second parameter the query sql if it's failed then i'm gonna just show here failed if not failed if not failed then i'm going to bind the parameters first bind 
parameters okay here we're going to bind the parameters my sql i stmt bind param takes three argument first argument our statement and second argument what type of value you want to bind to this field here this username type of string user emails type of string and user password type of string so is s s and then to need to refer the variable so first variable user name second variable user email and third variable user password and let's define this variable right here username is equal to let's say in this case gen user email is equal to let's say gen 24 23 let's say gmail.com and password user password is equal to let's call in this time one two three four okay now we bind this parameter here the sequence is important if we have here something like this user id and here we need to define i your first this first i is indicate this first one the second one indicate the second one right like so the sequence is important here okay i'm going to get rid of this all right now we need to execute let's call it execution execution and here my sql istmt execute stmt all right now let's try to navigate this folder first localhost slash prepared statement prepared statement slash insert dot php just hit enter all right there's nothing i think it's inserted to the database successfully let's check it okay localhost slash php my admin hit enter and select prepared statement database and now select prepared statement database and click on users all right it's inserted if we reload one more times let's change something there let's say gen one two in this case now reload and reload the database here i'm using here control r for mac user it should be command r okay it's inserted right and that's how we can insert data into database using prepared statement in this video we are going to learn how to update user using prepared statement first i'm going to create a new file update.php okay first opening php tag and closing php tag now you need to import the database connection recover once db.php and here template sql is equal to update users now set username is equal to question mark then comma user email is equal to question mark and user password is equal to question mark and here where user id is equal to question mark and this all this placeholder will bind during execution right now i'm going to create prepared statement creating prepared statement okay here stmt is equal to mysql i stmt init it takes the connection variable or we got it from this individual psv file and now preparing preparation if mysql i mysql i stmt prepare first parameter stmt second parameter our query if it is failed then just echo failed 
and if it is not failed then I'm going to bind the the placeholder right here binding param parameters right and here let's say mysql istmt bind param first parameter our statement second parameter and first username type of string so h email type of string so again h user password also type of string h and user id type of i and here this sequence is very important right and then we need to reference variable for username let's create variable first here let's say username is called to my name barik here user email is called to let's say barik 19gmail.com this is a perfect email i'm just using here for testing purpose use your password is equal to let's say secret and use your id is equal to one okay here we need to just reference the variable name first username then use your email then use your password and then use your id okay everything looks okay right and then we need to execute this query or this statement to be precious execution is my sql i s d m t execute and here just a statement that's pretty much it now i'm going to I'm going to go to browser and here localhost slash prepared statement slash update dot php just hit enter okay I think it updated let's check it in our database localhost slash php my admin just hold a bit Okay, and I'm going to select this prepared statement database. I'm going to click on this users table. All right, the first field is updated. Barik, barik 19 gmailcom and secret. Let's try to update this fourth, this field, this field for Gen 12. Okay, and I'm going to name this, let's say, okay, let's leave it like this. Just going to change it to admin. Just, I'm going to change it to admin, right? And here I'm going to change this one, this ID to 4. Okay, I'm going to just reload here, reload, and reload. I'm going to use here control and R shortcut. Alright, here it also updated. Awesome, right? And that's how we can update data using prepared statement. In the next video, we're going to learn how to delete data. See you there. Now we're going to delete data using prepared statement. So let's get started. I'm going to create again a new file named delete.php. As always, opening PSP tag and closing PSP tag. Now we're going to import the database connection. Require once db.php. And here let's a template SQL is equal to delete from users where let's say user id is equal to question mark now creating prepared statement and here i'm going to create a variable stmt is equal to mysql istmt in it it takes one parameter connection this variable we got it from db.psp and now here preparation preparation if my sql istmt prepare 
if it fails to be paired then okay when I just show failed if it is not then I'm gonna just bind the parameters here this one is your ID binding parameters okay my SQL I S T M T bind bind param first parameter is the empty here we need to declare what type of value we want to bind to this placeholder okay this is integer type so i and here we need to reverse here we need to refer a variable user id right let's create a variable here okay, let's create a variable here user id is equal to one okay here we want to delete the users associated id then need to execute execute then mysql istmt execute and here is the empty that's very much it let's try this out okay localhost slash prepared statement slash delete dot php reload okay i think it's deleted let's see I'm going to open this users table okay the ID warn users and deleted let's try to delete the last one four reload reload I'm using here control and R shortcut okay it's deleted all right so it's working and that's how we can delete user using prepared statement and that's very much it and this is called CRUD operation C stand for create create read update and delete okay so we did this all things we did this all things create we create in insert.php we read it where it is it is read.php we update it in update.php and we delete right now delete.php and that's called crowd operation right in the next section of this course we're going to build a task list we're going to build a task list project using prepared statement or you can practice your prepared statement knowledge right by building little real world project right so let's move on and I will see you in the next section of this course now we are going to set up the task list project download the zip file attached to this lecture and extract it after extracting you will get a folder like this and copy this folder and put this folder in the htdocs folder whether you are using mac or windows i am using here windows okay just copy this folder and from here i need to go to i'm going to go to this local c drive from here jam folder from here htdocs and here put this folder right here and open it with the code editor right and the project folder look like this it contains one CSS folder and two HTML file and now let's see how it looks in browser all right this is how it looks and here we can add new user we can edit the user and we can delete the existing user right okay here edit user.html this is the edit user.html page here we can update the existing user okay and this is just an html template and we will start building this amazing project from the next video now we're going to create database and database table 
so let's do this let's go to localhost slash php my admin and you must have to run apache and mysql okay i'm going to create brand new database and here project one okay i'm going to select it project one and create table the create table name here users with four column go and first user id integer and it's length 11 and here auto increment next field name username type worker and length 255 user email it's barker also 255 and user password type worker and 255 I'm going to click on save. Okay, let's insert some dummy user. Okay, insert. Okay, let's say first John. John24 at the red gmail.com. Password secret. Jane. Gen24 at the red gmail.com and also its password, let's say secret and go. Browse and here two dummy user we have inserted. And in this video, we're going to establish database connection and creating reusable components okay very first let's change the extension of this to html file to php okay edit user dot php and for index dot html to index dot php okay now let's create a brand new folder name includes and here let's create a new file db.php okay opening psp tag and closing psp tag and this is our db stand for database here we will have our database connection in this file let's create a variable name link mysql i connect it takes four argument first localhost second the database username in my catcher root and by default and password empty and database name project one okay if this link variable if this link variable return false that means if it is failed then we're gonna display something let's say echo failed okay here database connection failed all right now I'm going to open up index.php and I'm going to cut this part of code okay and I'm going to create a new PSP file named header.php 
okay just paste it here okay and so I'm going to import this edit.php right here using require once and here require once includes slash header.php okay and for let's cut up this and get another file name footer.php and paste it here I'm going to close footer.php and here I need to import by using require statement require one statement okay includes slash footer.php okay now open up header.php and at the very beginning right here let's import database connection here that means the db.php file require once you might get tempted to use something like this dot slash this points to the same folder right here include then db dot php but that's not it why now let's talk about how this requires once statement import code okay when we use something like say here when we use here require once include dot header dot php and php read this this line of code and then it just import whatever I have in this edit.php file as plain text okay let's say in our edit.php like this it contains this code and it just just copy everything and just it put it like so and and that's how require one statement work so now if we use like this then this db.php file points to the root project right and there's no db.php file so it will throw an error make sense okay let's try using the like so and i'm going to open web browser and let's navigate our localhost slash sorry local host slash project one slash index dot php it will throw an error right makes sense so we need to use here includes slash db dot php now it should work Just reload i'm using here control r shortcut okay it's working all right now let's check the database connection here all right so in index.php okay in here if we use if link if the database connection is success then it's written true and here let's say we are connected okay reload we are connected so we successfully connect to the debit and we also create a reusable component and let's do this for uh, also for edit user dot php okay just remove this okay and here opening psp tag closing psp tag and here require once and here includes slash header dot php and here just get rid of this two line okay, opening psp tag and closing psp tag here require 
ons folder.php okay let test also edit user dot php okay here but here we get an error oh we should all user includes slash folder because this folder.php file included in this includes folder now reload okay it's good and in this video we're going to establish database connection and creating reusable components okay very first let's change the extension of this to html file to php okay edit user dot php and for index.html to index.php okay now let's create a brand new folder name includes and here let's create a new file db.php okay opening psp tag and closing psp tag and this is our db stand for database here we will have our database connection in this file let's create a variable name link mysql i connect it takes four argument first localhost second the database username in my catcher root and by default and password empty and database name project one okay if this link variable if this link variable return false that means if it is failed then we're gonna display something let's say echo failed okay here database connection failed all right now i'm going to open up index.php and I'm going to cut this part of code okay and I'm going to create a new PSP file named header.php okay just paste it here okay and I'm going to import this header.php right here using require once and here require once includes slash header.php okay and for let's cut up this and get another file name footer.php and paste it here I'm going to close footer.php and here I need to import by using require statement, require one statement. Okay, includes slash footer.php. Okay. Now open up header.php and at the very beginning right here let's import database connection here that means the db.php file require once you might get tempted to use something like this dot slash this points to the same folder right here include then db.php but that's not it why now let's talk about how this requires one statement import code okay when we use something like say here when we use here require once includes.header.php 
and the PHP read this this line of code and then it just import whatever I have in this edit.php file as plain text okay let's say in our edit.php like this it contains this code and it just just copy everything and just it put it like so and and that's how recur one statement work so now if we use like this then this db.php file points to the root project right and there's no db.php file so it will throw an error make sense okay let's try using the like so and i'm going to open web browser and let's navigate our localhost slash sorry local host slash project one slash index dot php it will throw an error right makes sense so we need to use here includes slash db dot php now it should work Just reload i'm using here control r shortcut okay it's working all right now let's check the database connection here all right so in index.php okay in here if we use if link if the database connection is success then it's written true and here let's say we are connected okay reload we are connected so we successfully connect to the debit and we also create a reusable component and let's do this for uh, also for edit user dot php okay just remove this okay and here opening PSP tag, closing PSP tag and here recover once and here includes slash header.php and here just get rid of this two line okay, opening PSP tag and closing PSP tag here recover once Folder.php. Okay, let's just also edit user.php. Okay, here, but here we get an error. Oh, we should all use your includes slash folder because this folder.php file included in this includes folder. Now, reload okay it's good before deleting user let's try adding new user first open up index.php and right here okay and this is the form for add new user and here in the form tag okay action is equal to the same fade index.php and method post okay and here i'm going to open a psp tag and here close psp tag and in here if is set and here there's no name so let's name it name is equal to submit for now okay no problem submit here post submit and if we hit on this add new user then we're going to check this two field this field name is name is equal to username and this field is equal to password email right let's call it user email and here i'm going to 
get a new variable username is equal to post username this is the index name right here okay user email post user email and this is the name of this index and now I'm going to here let's use trim function trim and also here trim it's cool now if empty username is function takes on parameter name if this node is equal to empty or or user email if this is empty then it's written true and if and if it is empty then return true so if it's written true we'll check it error is equal to error is equal to true and now i'm going to check if it is not then i'm going to check if it is not empty then i'm going to i'm going to insert the data into database here i'm going to get sql statement sql query here insert insert into users let's say set username is equal to here username is equal to question mark and user email is equal to question mark and we also want to set the password by default for is user here user email okay. this is user password it's called to I'm going to call it secret this is by default and then SDMT is called to SDMT init link if my SQL I SDMT prepare stmt and sql if it's failed then die query failed if not that the gate i want to bind the parameters in this case this placeholder my sql i stmt bind prom stmt First type username strings user email string user password also string. Now user name user email and user password. And now I need to execute the query mysql i stmt execute. stmt and that's very much it now it's if error is equal to true then we have to display some error message and i want to show it right here this is inside here and here i'm going to open i'm going to open the php tag 
opening PSP tag, closing PSP tag in between is set. If error is set, then we want to display something P tag and in between field can't be blank. If not, then just empty string and echo here. That's pretty much it. Let's test it. Reload. Now if we click on add new user and it shows field cannot be blank. If you enter something, let's try to enter my name here Barik mda barik 19 gmail.com add new user okay it's added awesome right let's try add another one let's say mark mark 23 at gmail.com add new user already it also added fantastic isn't that all right let's move on and in the next video, we're going to delete user. And I will answer, I will the, answer questions. the questions. Why we should Why not, we should get, not request get request for, for, for delete, delete operation. operation. Now we're going to build the functionality for deleting user. If we hit on this delete button, then this user will get deleted. And if we click on this button, this user will get deleted. Get deleted. So let's make this functionality. And first of all, they have a good way to doing this and there will be a bad way to doing this first let's learn the bad way how can do this okay let's open up index.php and i'm going to scroll bottom here okay i'm going to change this edit to deal and here also deal and instead echoing this i'm going to store it in a variable let's call it user id and here we add this in earlier lecture if you click on this edit button then it's sent this query parameter and for delete button we send this query parameter right and then we can access the user id with this and first let's test it out i'm going to use your echo user id and now I'm going to reload my control and R and if you click on delete here we see one right if we click here and this is four right now with this we get the user ID and which user we want to delete and then get the ID and delete the user from the database okay here one more things we have to change this code applications to let's change this to task list project okay i'm going to just now i'm going to change it to task list task list and now here we get the user id when you click on right here and then we want to get the id and that's how we can get the id and now we want to delete the user from the database where the id is equal to where we clicked right and here i'm going to create a template let's call it sql here sql here sql is equal to delete delete from users where user id user id is equal to question mark now stmt is equal to mysql istmt init and link if mysql istmt prepare stmt and sql then just die failed If not that the case, then else MySQL I 
MySQL I If that's not the case, then MySQL I STMT bind param first STMT and what type of value you want to bind your integer and the variable user ID and now you need to execute MySQL I STMT execute and here STMT and that's pretty much it let's try this out it should work now reload okay now I'm going to click on this delete now it should delete this user delete here okay click here okay it's deleted if we click on delete again okay it's deleted the user one if we click on here it's deleted all right what's wrong here okay reload one more time delete oh it's not deleted right so what should you do when this done then we want to refresh and here let's use something called header here location here location the first l the character l must be uppercase and here localhost slash project one slash index dot php and in order to use it we need to turn on output buffering and head over to the to the script header.php and here ob start now let's reload all right let's try using uh, let's try add new user because we deleted all the user here let's say first name barik email address barik12 at the gmail.com add new user okay it's added if we click here delete Oh, it sent it to something else so here we should add something called http http and now it should work back reload not just reload and here let's say barrick at new user barrick 2423gmail.com and add new user okay it's added let's try use another john email john23 at the red gmail.com add new user okay it's added if we click on delete okay it's deleted it's cool it's working let's try add another user let's say mark jen and the gmail.com here let's say again Stephen here st ph and Stephen at the gmail.com all right so here's the bad thing that if you click here it's deleted right now if we hover here on the link in the left bottom you see some things index.psp question mark deal is equal to nine so with that we can delete this user without clicking the delete link question mark del is equal to 19 sorry 9 if we hit enter now 9 deleted that's very bad right let's say you you have submit your website to a search engine like google and the google caller will visit your every link of your of your website right and they will find this link del and all user have a specific id with del with the end query parameter del is equal to eight nine or something else and they will delete all the user right that's terrible that's that's ter terrible right so that's why we should not use here get request we should use always post request and that we will do in the next lecture for now we're going to build the functionality for deleting user using post request and that's good approach let's try this now i'm going to comment this part of code okay just comment sorry and from here here and here let's say in order to use post request we need to change this 
I'm going to just remove this link. I'm going to remove this link, anchor link from here and then here form. And form right here input. Type submit value delete. And to store the value, we need to or we need to use another input and that's type of hidden. This this is the trick here, right? And here hidden. And the value the value will be dynamic and the value will be like this one and the user id and we need to specify name here name is equal to i'm going to say it name and here i'm going to use name here delete and here action is equal to index.php the same page and method post now when you click on this delete button i'm going to reload it in the browser let's see how it looks okay now let's make this like link i'm using a bootstrap so we can use here just a clutch button and button link and that's that's pretty much it reload now it looks like a link <laughs> awesome right and then when we hit enter on this delete then we want to get the user id and let's get it right here if is set post here uh, the value you want from this field this hidden field but when you click on the delete button then you want to detect the click first here delete and here the name this is the name the index name and when you click on delete then we want to get the user id user id is equal to post Bell. and from this hidden field from here name is equal to okay i'm going to change it to bell now i'm going to just echo for first time let's test it reload i'm going to click on delete okay it eight it's working right here something not looks good here the first letter is capital letter no worry about the styling and let's build the functionality and that's important and here we need to do the same query here we need to use the same query we used before I'm going to copy this part from here I'm going to paste it right here and select and control and forward slash and on comment and then just format a little bit shift tab and it should work all the functionality are same i'm going to just remove this header i'm going to reload sorry i'm going to reload and if i click on delete now reload what's wrong here reload here okay it's deleted we should use here this header this redirection right and now reload let's try adding new user barrick barrick at the red gmail.com add new user i said john john at the rate gmail.com add new and if i click on this barrick if i click on this delete right here and it's deleted it's working right and there's no way 
to delete it using this query parameters. Let's try one more time. Add new user. If we something try to patch your DLL is equal to and there's nothing happened, right? There's nothing happened. And that's good. So we should use always as for edit and delete. Post request. Instead, get request. Did you got it? Now I think you have the perfect sense why you should use post request for a deleting or editing user. Now we're going to build the functionality for editing user. Let's open up edit user.php and right here we need to do something. Very first we need to write some code in index.php and from here I think right here instead sending this get request or uh, via this anchor link and we want to use your post request like so just I'm going to copy this code from here and I'm going to replace it here and just format a little bit now I'm going to change this action to edit user.php and here method post and type submit and name delete here edit and here val okay let's leave it like this and here I need to change this delete text to edit and uh, okay now let's go to user edit user.php and right here first first opening php tag and closing php tag in between we're going to set some very basics rule if users send get request then we want to redirect to the users to the index page okay let's do this if server super global variable and here request method sorry it should be uppercase get then header header location index.php let's test it and I'm going to reload okay then here edit user.php now we're redirected to this index page because we are sending get request if we click here let's see now we run this edit user page awesome right now one more thing here when we hit enter or click on this button right here although it looks like a link but it's a button you will click here and the id here the user id we have sent to the next page via post super global now get that and here and here else if not that the case then here let's get the user id user id is equal to post let's say hell and i'm going to just echo user id id in fact now let's try this reload if we click on this edit okay 12 let's add here another user let's call it mark mark 23 at the gmail.com now this user id is 13 you will click on edit okay we got here 13 the user id right now go to database and get the user name email address and password of this user right and uh, let's do this right here let's create a query first user sql first select from users select from users where user user id is equal to placeholder and then stmt is equal to mysql istmt in it it takes one parameter sql sorry it's link 
link then if my sql i stmt prepare and here stmt and second parameter sql or query if it is failed then just die failed if not then i'm going to bind the parameter first mysql i stmt bind param first stmt then i this type is integer so i use your i and then the variable is user id and we need to execute it sorry mysql i stmt execute and stmt now to get the result right result is equal to my sql i st empty get result and here it takes one parameter st empty here i'm going to use if statement because it's only written one user okay row is equal to my sql i fate asoc and result and now here first username is equal to row here username user email is equal to row user email and here user password is equal to row user password and here the name this is the or database field name right it need to be exactly same as a database name database field name okay now we get this data now i'm gonna show this in the field okay here in in here in the placeholder not here instead value is equal to opening psp tag closing psp tag echo user name and i'm going to copy this okay and then i'm going to paste it right here and this is for user user email and this is for user password all right so let's try this out i'm going to i'm going to back to the index page reload and here i'm going to click on this user that id 12. okay here we see barik mark 23 at the gmail.com and password let's see does it right or not okay it's working right it's good and i use your same email let's delete this user at barik and premier barik and uh, okay i'm going to now click on edit here now you see this is a right information you get right and for if we click here okay we get the right information now now let's we change this mark to something else and the, the email and then we hit on the submit button then we should update the user and also you want to show here an alert message let's do this all right for that i want to get another here opening psp tag and closing psp tag in between we're going to detect when they click on this submit button and let's give it some name name is equal to i'm going to name it submit and for username here name is equal to username and right here name is equal to email and here name is equal to password and now let's detect now let's detect the click on submit button if is set is set post here submit okay now you call you clicked on submit button now let's try this reload sorry back reload i'm sorry for that and click on edit 
click on the submit okay undefined val say undefined index val in line number nine okay let's see what's wrong here line number nine all right right here and it's get some value right and here we want to use another trick let's use right here hidden field input type hidden its name also name it let's say name it equal to hidden and that's pretty much it and here also value is equal to okay in this name is equal to here val instead and value is equal to something dynamic we got it okay let's pull the value user id is equal to row and here user id right and let's do the same thing right here opening and closing psp tag and here let's say echo user id now let's try this time back reload i'm going to click on this edit okay it's good if you click on submit you clicked on submit button there's no error awesome right so now let's do something else there now i'm going to get the name first okay username is equal to i'm going to use different variable because you have user user underscore name i'm going to just use your user name let's use your camel kit user name is equal to okay post here name for user name user name and here for user email is equal to post user email and user password is equal to is equal to post user password now let's check it name email for email password for just password here instead Okay, now I'm going to use your trim function and also right here the trim function trim and also right here and what is trim function just it like this you work like this if you enter something like say it's page a is page and it returns something like a it's remove the page this first page and second page and if it will not remove something space in between this page it just remove the outside space right and that's the work up and that's the kind of work done by team function now we're going to check if empty username username or m user email or empty user password then here we want to display something okay echo deep tag and closing deep tag in between field can't be empty empty and here let's add a clutch alert alert danger and this is bootstrap clutch right this is nothing related to php you don't need to use okay because you're using here double code so you should use inside single code and just stop it right there now let's see i'm going to back to the index page and here reload click on edit okay it's good if we make empty one of the fields now submit it's a okay no worry about this user email we'll look at this very soon field can't be empty 
that's very good right so here user email 31 let's get what's wrong going there 31 user email here we have email not user email right sorry for that okay let's change this name to name here name okay we can't use here reload okay, I'm going to just go to index page again edit and make empty submit okay field can't be empty right if one of the field or no field is empty then else then this code would work now we're going to update the data to the data page okay so okay so let's create a query SQL is equal to update users set username is equal to placeholder uh, this question mark user email is equal to question mark and user password is equal to question mark where user id is equal to question mark also now here let's say stmt is equal to mysql i stmt init and here on parameter link and now if as always mysql i stmt prepare and here stmt and stmt and sql then just die let's say failed query failed to be precise and else if not that the case then we want to do something here and update the data first let's let's bind the parameter first mysql isdmt bind param first stmt then the first placeholder is type of string so h user email also strings user password also type of string and then user id is type of i and then we need to reference the variable the variable we have here and let's say user id user id i'm going to just shade i'm going to just name it id if this variable doesn't exist we're going to create it very soon no worry about it and then user name then user email then user password oh this id should be the last one not the first right your sequence is very important in the case of prepared statements and here let's say id let's declare this variable id is equal to that you got it from this this type hidden name val okay let's call it val i'm going to use your post super global and val and that's very much it and mysql i still bind param and id something wrong there maybe let's check it out shape it oh here we use something crazy right we should use your curly braces use your uh, wrong bracket here okay now it it's fine now we need to execute the query at last and now we need to execute the query mysql i stmt execute and here just st empty and here we're going to just print some message echo i'm going to just copy this code from here and replace this and alert danger i'm going to change it to primary now let's try this out okay now i'm going to back to index.php and from here click on edit and here let's try submit mark one two submit okay field can't be empty it's it's updated i think and here instead field can't be empty this is not a correct text user updated 
now let's try this out now again let's go to index.php reload marked one two it's updated let's type bar it this time this user one two click on submit okay it's updated but here we just see this bar not updated information right it's updated here first give another link to back to the index page okay here we could say a anchor link is rep is equal to index dot sorry it should be single quote index dot php and here go back let's see now back to index dot php first sorry this is not equal symbol now let's click on this edit and let's try to one two two and submit okay user updated go back yeah now we're on the index page awesome right there's one little things we have to do if we change it if we update now it doesn't show us the updated mark one two this should be here's mark one two the part it just show the it not show the latest so what could you do regarding that all right in order to make it working we need to do a little little trick so what trick we should do and here just we need to change this username variable here here and here i'm going to select it by control g right and this is the feature of vs code and here user underscore name and for user email user email and for password let's say user sorry and here user password and that's pretty much it and it should work let's try this I'm going to reload I'm going to click on edit let's say mark 2020 and add another okay it's working right here at two to three it also work right let's change this to something else everything looks perfect right so here we have just removed the link we could just add that and that's very easy okay we did a lot of functionality instead showing this message if it is success then redirect this user to the to the index page okay header location and here index.php we could use here http colon slash slash localhost slash project one slash index.php but we could use just index.php let's work okay reload it click on this edit and add to submit okay it's good right if we click on edit if we make one of the field empty and try to submit it it's a field cannot be empty right it's kind of working how fun it is all right this is the end of our task list project and here we can add user let's see now here we can add new user we can delete user we can edit the user all right and with little field validation just for empty and we could validate this field using regular expressions i'm not worried about that for now i'm going to teach you ppr statement and how to work with it and how to build a real world project with it right and that's very much important and we are done with this task list project in the next section of this course we will start learning PDO, that means PSP data object. That's another great way to, to connect to database using PSP. Right? And this same project we will build using PDO. After the PDO introduction, that means the PDO basic section. Let's move on and let's learn PDO, PSP data object. Alright, in order to use PDO, you need to configure some settings in psp.ini file just go to jam folder and from there select php and here search php.ini file all right and just open it in a text editor 
all right i open it up with sublime text editor and here search for pdo control f pdo all right and here right below you see something called extension is equal to pdo underscore mysql i'm using mysql database so here's this semicolon mean comment here you might have this semicolon just remove the semicolon you must need to remove the semicolon all right and if you want to use other kind of database options then you can use you need to manually enable in this file all right that's all about you need to start writing pdo oh, what is pdo pdo stands for php data object consistent way to access database we can work with multiple to database it's flexible way to connect to database and it's sometimes called database abstraction layer right and it support object oriented feature and here's some advantages of video we can work with multiple database performance and security are the huge criteria right and it also has excellent error handling capability now let's see video database options that means which types of database supported by video here all the database supported by video in the skin shows up in order to get the latest updated list just head over to this link and enough theory let's start learning video all right now we're going to start writing psb code with video so let's get started first of all flip over to this directory htdocs right and inside this folder create a new folder name pdo you could choose whatever name you want i'm going to choose here just pdo and i'm going to open it with visual studio code and now i'm going to create a new file here name db.php and here opening psp tag and closing psp tag in between let's first dollar symbol dsn dsn stands for data source name this variable hold our database information here first what type of database you want to use you want to use your mysql and then host in this case it localhost and semicolon now db name a database name pdo this database this database not exist right now when i create it right now so let's create the database first okay localhost slash php my admin make sure you're running this Apache and MySQL. All right. And from here, new. And just click on this new right there and choose the name. I'm going to choose the name video. At the same time, I want to create a database table named users with four column the first field name id and its type of integer and length i'm going to choose it 11 it's more than enough and here auto increment go and here username and then user email and here user password and for username it's type of varker length 255 and same thing for email also type of varker 255 and user password also type of varker and 255 and now I'm going to save it. And at the same time, so let's insert some dummy user. And I'm going to click on this insert tab right here. 
and it is auto increment it will automatically start from one to and whatever right and username first i'm going to choose it john email let's call it john23 at the red gmail.com password secret username let's say jen email jen23 at the red gmail.com password also secret secret one and now go browse okay to a dummy user we have inserted right now let's back to core editor and now i want to start with try cache block first try and if something wrong then catch and here pdo exception and I catch it with the dollar symbol e variable and e get message if there's something wrong with it then it will give a message and i wanna print it to the screen echo and message right and inside here i'm going to create a new variable pdo and new pdo and all uppercase and here first parameter dsn second parameter or database username for my case it's root and password blank and that's very much it now i'm going to navigate this file in browser let's try this localhost slash pdo slash db.php all right there's nothing that means it's fine and let's make a mistake here when this cache block run or this try block when you have something wrong information in this dsn variable then it will go to this cache block it will give us a message so let's see if we change this this changes to p i just remove this p then all right unknown database do make sense and if you change it let's say something called localhost all right so here no says host each none understand so let's move on and in the next video we're gonna fetch data from database all right now we're going to fetch data from database I'm going to create a new file here read.php opening php tag closing php tag in between first we need to import this video or this this file right here let's call it require once and here db.php okay and then here we need to create a sql statement first so sql is equal to select everything from users and now we have the variable called pdo we get this from this file right and then here pdo first prepare and here sql now we just need to execute this stmt execute and there's nothing right now we're gonna just print the result whatever we got from database while and here let's call it users is equal to stmt fetch and here we could use another function called fetch all and it is work exactly the same but fetch all it bit faster but it takes more memory let's go with fetch now i'm going to print our here users now let's open up web browser and try to navigate this file read.php what do you got 
all the users from the data page as an associative array. Make sense? And that's how we can read data from data page. But this is not the end. Now I'm going to copy and I'm going to comment out this part right here. Now here we're using just a SQL statement. There's no parameter we used, right? So first, they have two types of where we can write a SQL statement in video. First, unnamed placeholder and named placeholder. So for unnamed placeholder, we can use here PPR statement. Select everything from users where let's call ID is equal to question mark here. Now we can bind this with this type in, the, in here in the execute statement. But what could you do here? If we have multiple, then we can just separate it with like so. Username is equal to question mark. But let's use here just the ID. Okay. And now we can bind it with two way. First way is called using bind param function and another way just using an array. So first let's do it with bind param. And here I'm going to use bind param. And here first one. This is the one statement. If we have something like another, so let's see first this one. And here we can use whatever we want. Let's call it one. We're gonna bind it with. Let's call it with one. And that's pretty much it. It will work just fine. Let's try this. Reload. Oh, here one mistake. We can't use here the hard coded value. We need to reference a variable. And let's call it id is equal to 1. And here id. Now reload. Alright, we get the user from a data page, right? Okay, so now we can use something like this. And if we have multiple here, multiple, uh, let's say condition here, if id is equal to 1, let's call and user id let's call it username is equal to question mark then we need to use another variable let's call it name is equal to john and here we need to use another function and here this is name and this is two right now reload what do you see same thing right it did the first one if we change it to gen, let's change it to gen. Oh, gen is maybe lower get. We get nothing because gen ID is two. We write here two. All right, we get the users gen from data page. Make sense? And how we can use array here? So instead writing this bind theorem, we can use array instead. And you know to use array first, you just you need to pass the array right here. The first one is ID, let's call it one, and the second one is the username. It John. Let's try it. What do you see? Same thing, right? Make sense? And you can use array like so. Now let's talk about another part here. We can set the fetch mode attribute or whatever want to return it's written associative array right so we can tell it hey written instead as object so we can just set it like there right here first video and then set attribute and it takes two parameter first parameter video colon colon attr attribute default fetch mode and the second parameter video fetch let's call it asoc and it is default right 
So we get the assays associative array. It's fetch asoc. It associative array, right? So let's try this. All right. It's associative array. Makes sense. Now we can tell to please give out something called fetch fetch obj as object. All right. What do you see? Object, right? And we can override it right here just by passing the parameter fit or here as of let's say all right we get the array instead of passing it right here we can just pass it here like so let's change it to fit as of. oh let's call it obj reload object right make sense that's it so now let's talk about another things called unnamed placeholder it, it's called unnamed placeholder and let's try named placeholder oh we each are equivalent to it maybe no it's okay i'm going to comment all the part and i'm going to copy this one and paste it and comment and from here I'm going to copy this code and paste it right below and now I'm going to uncomment okay and then just format a little bit and get rid of this one this is unnamed placeholder now I'm gonna remove it now we're gonna work with named placeholder instead and here bind parameter okay leave it like this and array just comment it there and this time there's no now it's called associative array let's call it asoc array anyway and here okay now i'm going to write the sql statement sql and in the rest of the course i will be using this unnamed sorry this named placeholder select everything from users where user user id sorry just id not user id id is equal to here the magic and id is equal to here first colon then whatever name you want to choose i'm going to choose it id and user name is equal to and colon name that's pretty much it right now we prepared this sql statement it's completely fine now id is equal to something like that and we can just instead using here one two three by the pose instead position we need to use the named itself the the placeholder itself called id each id and here name and it will do the same trick right it, it will do the same things as you did with others reload it what do you got all right id2 username 10 everything looks perfect right and now this is called bind param instead we could use associative array instead passing all of this right here let's comment it and here we could use associative array and first id we're gonna set it to id and then here we're gonna set it name to name and let's see what it's return same result right now you can use whatever you want to use in the rest of the course i'll be using this format named placeholder and here bind those parameter using associative array and like so and that's everything how we can how we can fetch data from data page using video i think this lecture is a lot longer but it's very important to understand 
but it's very important to understand the basics. If you got everything from this video, then the rest of the video will be pretty easy for you. So please understand, try to understand everything in this lecture. Then you will be able to use video whatever or whatever you want to use. Right? And that's very important. Okay, enough talk. Let's move on and I will see you on the next video. In this video, we are going to learn how to insert data into database using video. Let's get started. I'm going to create a file insert.php. In Cloud Operation, C-R-E-U-D, C for create, R for read, right? So I'm going to change this insert name to create instead. Okay, first opening PSP tag, closing PSP tag. In between, first we need to import the data page connection from db.php. Recover once db.php. And right below here, first I'm going to create a SQL statement. SQL is equal to select everything from users. Sorry. In this case, it's not select, we want to insert, right? So insert into users and here on specifically what do you want to insert? The first ID, ID is auto incremented, so we do not need to use here. And here user name, user email, user password and Okay, that's pretty much it. Now, valid. The first valid is I'm going to use the name, lowercase name, and then email, then here password. And that's our SQL statement. Now, stmt is equal to PDO prepare here SQL now we need to bind those named placeholder stmt execute and here name is equal to let's declare a variable right here name is equal to my name Barik email is equal to mdbaric19 at gmail.com password let's call it secret secret okay no problem now here oh and name for email email and password password okay here one important note this need to be exact whatever we have here the exactly same all right and that's very much it let's try it go to browser and try to navigate this file create.php reload okay i think data inserted to the database let's check it now I'm going to reload. All right, see that? It inserted successfully. It's pretty easy, right? Isn't that beautiful? Now we're going to update data. In this case, update user. Let's try it. First, I'm going to create a new file, update.php. Okay php opening tag and closing tag in between as always we need to import the database connection db.php and here sql statement update users and now set user name is equal to 
name user email is equal to email and then user sorry user password is equal to password and where in this case id is equal to id and that's pretty much it right this is our sql statement now stmt is equal to pdo prepare first sql and stmt is called to pdo execute and here associative array right first name okay i'm gonna name it okay this name variable doesn't exist let's create first the, all the variables first name is called to i'm gonna change it to let's call it mark email is equal to let's call it mark email at the red gmail.com just dumb email password is equal to let's call it administration or whatever you want to choose here and id who is user we are not update let's uh, use here i know update the first user id is equal to one okay and here email email here email and here password password and id id and that's very much it now let's try this out and i'm going to just navigate the file delete sorry this is update.php call undefined method pdo execute oh something wrong there maybe oh here we should use sorry i'm really sorry for that here it should be video instead stmt i'm, I'm really sorry reload yeah I think it's updated. Let's check it. Reload. What is he here? The first digit is updated. Mark, mark email, <laughs> gmail.com, administration. What do you want, right? And that's how we can update users or data with video. Let's move on. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to delete user. In this video we're going to learn how to delete user so let's get started first let's create a file name delete.php first opening php tag closing php tag and in here require want db.php and sql statement here it's called to delete delete from users where id is equal to id all right and then here stmt is equal to pdo and here prepare sql and i need to execute it first let's get the variable i'm gonna delete the user number three the ID three and stmt execute and here ID ID that's pretty much it let's try this out so you navigate delete.php all right I think it's deleted let's try this all right, what do I see here? The user three deleted. Let's try to delete user, the user, the ID is two. Two and here reload and see. All right, it's deleted. And that's how we can delete user uh, data 
using prepared sorry PDO PSP data object. I think you learned a lot about PDO. So let's build a project in the next section. And let's learn it how to use PDO in the real world scenario. Now we are going to build the task list project that is built using prepared statement. Now we are going to build it using PSP data object or PDO. First, download the attached file in this video and extract it in your htdocs folder. Then you will get a folder like this, project2 and open the folder with the code editor and the, the folder contains two HTML file and one CSS file inside a CSS folder and this look like in browser like so. This is index.ph, sorry, in this case index.html page and we have two page. And another is edit-user.html, right? Just download and extract on your htdocs folder and just test it. And, and from the next video, we're going to build this task list this task list project in this video we're going to create a database and database table so let's do this let's go to localhost slash php my admin make sure you're running apache mysql and from here click on new and give it a name i'm going to choose a name project 2 you can choose whatever name you want and here I'm going to separate it using dash okay, create now here are users with four column okay first the first field user ID type integer length 11 and auto increment go and here username type barker and length 255 and here user email user email type barker length 255 and user password type barker and length 255 and now chip I'm going to insert to dummy user insert first gen gen23 gmail.com secret john john23 at gmail.com and secret now go yeah now we'll click on browse and we have two dummy user right so now we created a database named project2 and database table users in this video we're going to create a reusable component and establishing database connection first of all let's change the HTML extension to PHP PHP and here index.html now index.php now I'm going to create here brand new folder name includes in the root directory and in this folder I'm going to create a file name db.php another header.php and footer.php inside this includes folder right now I'm going to open index.php just cut this code from here 
and paste it in this header.php and here opening PSP tag closing PSP tag in between recover once includes slash header.php and from here I'm going to cut this part and I'm going to paste it in footer.php and in here opening PSP tag and closing PSP tag in between recover once includes slash footer.php and for edit user.php I'm going to just delete this part and here opening PSP tag closing PSP tag require once includes slash header dot php and here I'm going to just delete this opening PSP tag closing PSP tag in between require once includes footer.php all right now I'm going to uh, create database connection right now opening PSP tag and closing PSP tag first DS and data source name okay so here first what type of database you wanna use here MySQL host is equal to localhost db name is equal to project2 right and here try pdo is equal to new pdo in this case it takes three parameter first dhn data source name then our database username and database password here cat pdo exception dollar e and i'm gonna echo the error message if any error occurred get message and that's pretty much it now i'm gonna import or include this file in header.php and here's a little different right now you might be not tempted to use like so here recover once db.php because we are in the same directory right but it will not work let's say localhost slash project2 all right warning this file couldn't be found why let's talk about a little bit about how this record ones function includes it just copy everything from this db.php and paste it right here right but first to include it in this index.php it just copy all the code from here and you just copy all the code to whatever is there right and just paste it all the code right here and then it's looking for inside this tag and then it start finding this db.php in the root directory but there's no db.php file to be more precise just i'm going to copy this file and i'm going to just paste it okay first step it will be like this then the next step it will just start finding and there's no file in this root directory right makes sense and that's how it works and that's why it do not work just we need to points to the includes all right includes right there includes folder inside db.php simple right now let's see reload yeah it's working perfect what do you want all right let's move on in this video we're gonna pull each other from database and I'm gonna show them here here mark and john are two hard coded user in html but we're gonna make it dynamic if we change something in database then it will change right let's do this first open index.php and from here just delete the second table row and right below this t body opening tag 
I'm going to open PSP tag, opening PSP tag, closing PSP tag. All right, in between, here I'm going to create a SQL statement. A SQL is equal to select everything from users. And now, STMT is equal to PDO prepare SQL. Now, STMT execute. There's nothing to bind, right? And then here, while of while user is equal to STMT fetch. All right, fetch. And it takes one parameter, the STMT. And first, let's see what it's return. Print our user. All right, so here's we do not need to use that. Here we need to provide. We should provide. If we not provide, it will just by default return the users as associated variable. We're gonna explicitly tell it to do this stuff. Here, PDO colon colon fit asoc. Double it should be. Now let's see in browser. I'm gonna just reload it. All right, it's return all the user. Okay. Instead that now first user user ID is equal to user near user ID user name is equal to user user name right and for email user email and here user email is equal to user user email right and here I'm going to just close the PSP tag right here and I'm going to open it right here so that we can write HTML code in between okay just put it here awesome right just form it a little bit awesome right so first I'm going to just change it opening PSP tag closing PSP tag in and here echo user id and right here opening psp tag closing psp tag echo user name and in here opening psp tag closing psp tag and echo sorry echo user email and here I'm gonna set query parameter and for edit user when I send this user to the edit page edit user dot php and here ID is called to just for now we'll change it just here echo user ID and you could leave it and for deleting okay here I'm gonna send this same page in this index.psv page and here ID is equal to okay here echo user ID and that's pretty much it right now let's try this out it should be dynamic reload all right this two user is dynamic let's add another user here insert and the, her first name let's call it barik and here barik 23 24 let's say whatever and passwords let's choose this secret no worry about it just go yeah it's added just now reload here barik added right awesome let's move on all right now we're going to make the functionality we can add user and if we have some name here let's say hello sorry name just hello anyway gmail.com if we click here now it's have nothing it's nothing to write there okay so if we click on this add new user then it should add new user and need to show here it should show right here let's make this working all right first of all and right below this 
ending form tag opening PSP tag closing PSP tag in between first if is set post super global okay first we need to add here target here action is index.php and method post okay this is username name is equal to username here name is equal to email address email and here name is equal to submit all right let's name it different because we have submit right below and add new user okay that's pretty much it now if post if you click on this button create new user and the name is add new user and then you want to get the value first user name is called to sorry user name is called to post super global and your username and this is this name and user email is equal to post email and that's the budget right and when i set a default value for user password default i'm going to say secret secret key or anyway and now we're gonna trim it and okay trim also this one all right what is trim do you just like work like this something like this space is something else and then it will remove the outer page but if you have inside it will not remove right and this is it this is how and that's how the team work anyway and now we're gonna take if empty user name if it is empty or empty user email then i'm gonna say here error is equal to true else here add new user now here on a create the query and if this error variable is set then on us when i when i set something there all right so okay right here under this p okay here and i say field can't be blank and here's a mistake can't be blank right and here opening psp tag let's say here opening closing psp tag i'm gonna paste it inside but only is set error this variable is exist if it is true then it will happen if it is not then nothing happened and this is called turnaround operator it have three part first part this one the condition then it will happen if it's true then if it's not then it's that is called turn report it also work likes the evil statement you could use your evil statements too but in short syntax we should use or consider turnary operator in this scenario right and now try this it should work now reload it will not add each other but if the field is blank then it show right below there the blank all right what's wrong there all right here's something wrong okay here we should use echo right it just return this one or this one all right and echo all right and put it to at top and right here now reload sorry i'm going to reload it click here again our field can't be blank let's do something here okay field can be blank if we something here 
and also something here now if we click here okay there are now no error message make sense it's working now let's add the user right now first sql is equal to insert into users first user name user email user password and here values first name you can choose whatever you want i'm gonna like name it like this email and password and where all right it's nowhere here right and now stmt is equal to pdo prepare sql and right below stmt execute associative array here name is equal to here user username email and here user email and password user password all right now it should work is there something wrong it shows an error message i couldn't find some problem there okay so i think it's okay Wait. okay and here okay and it's fine we just missed this semicolon right there and now it should add now after adding we're gonna just redirect it location and here header dot sorry not header index.php right now let's try adding new user first refresh and name let's say barik email something whatever add new user okay it's added right fantastic change it let's say mark we see here mark at red gmail.com add new user okay add it we click delt user okay the user deleted awesome right if we click here now it says that field can't be blank awesome it's working right all right now we're going to create a functionality for deleting user let's say if we hit on this edit then this user gen will get deleted if we click here then john will get deleted all right so let's make this functionality so for that instead using anchor link we can do it with anchor link but it's insecure right so let's use your post request instead using form okay html form and opening tag and closing tag all right and here in between action this same file index.php and method is called the post method first we want to have we need to have here two input field or let's see input type is equal to hidden and this hidden input will hold the value of the user id right and here value is equal to let's say first complete it type hidden and name is equal to let's name it val you can choose whatever name you want and then another one import type submit and value here's value is equal to delete and name it equal to submit you can name it whatever you want okay so now in here value let's see here echo user id now let's try this reload 
okay it looked like something oh we did in the wrong place right no worry just cut it from here or just cut it and paste it right there and change it to edit all right so here's some things we need to change or oh, change it out user all right so edit user don't worry about it we'll also change it and here this is delete now this time let's see okay it's good what it look like a button but we're gonna make it uh, look like a link so i'm using here bootstrap so you can use class called button button link it, it's built in bootstrap class now let's see reload all right it looks like a button right now i'm gonna get the value when you hit on the edit or the delete button and right here i'm going to open php tag here closing php tag and in between here if is set post super global when you hit enter this thing post super global will set and this name is submit and here i'm gonna get the value of this hidden field okay let's call it id is equal to okay super global post and name hell let's see id now reload for gen id 1 for john id 2 for baric id 3 let's see all right we get id 1 if we click here we get id 2 if we click here we get id 3 awesome right now let's create a sql statement here sql is equal to delete users where user id is equal to id all right and now stmt is equal to pdo prepare and here sql and right here stmt execute associative array first id is called to id that's pretty much it now then we're gonna just sorry shouldn't have the colon uh, semicolon right there and now we're gonna redirect the user when the delete is done right and here first location l must be uppercase right and index.php and in order to use header this location or uh, this redirection we need to add or uh, we need to uh, turn on output buffering okay opening psp tag closing psp tag in this header.php file we have included this file in this index.php now you can use here okay ob start and that's it and that's pretty much it all right now let's see it should work reload sorry i'm just all right so if we click here this gn user will delete all right what's wrong there it's not delete right reload what's wrong there's something wrong in our code delete users where user id is called to id right where user id is called to let's say reload click here all right now it works so previously we have the mistake or uh, for that region so delete from users where user id is called to something that's great right and now if we delete this one all right there's nothing let's add john john23 at gmail.com password secret text and go now reload all right now we have that
So let's move on. All right, now we're going to build the functionality for editing user. Let's say if the user click on this edit link, then it will send us to the next page. And in the next page, we can edit the user. All right, let's start doing that. First of all, open edit-user.php and very first, all right, and right here, opening PSP tag and closing PSP tag. In between, we're gonna take first if the user sent. If the user sent get request, then we're gonna just redirect the user to the index page. That means if the user sent get request, then we don't want to allow the user for this page. Okay, first here super global variable server and here request method. If the request method is called to get, then sorry, go away. And here header. location index.php okay here one more important things that please do not forget to add this line right here ob start else it will not work anyway if not that the case then it's completely okay now let's try to access the edit user page by just changing the URL edit user dot PHP all right now we're in the home page it's not allow us to the page crazy right awesome right I really liked it anyway now if not that the kit then we're gonna get something right here okay first let's back to index.php and and right below here all right just for it not here in fact all right just copy this code here and just replace this it first remove this part and paste it right there format a little bit okay and method post i'm gonna send to it to edit user dot php echo user id everything looks okay name hell and this is called this time edit right and it is also it's called also submit all right so anyway it's not important right now now let's get the value on this page right here okay ID user ID just by using super global post and here bell okay, echo ID let's try this but reload okay if we click on this edit all right four and the user ID is four if we click here it's six the user ID is six now with this ID let's go to data page and grab some data and show here username email and password as default value let's do this okay so first of all here i'm going to create a sql statement sql is equal to select everything from users where user id is equal to i'm going to name it just id and here stmt is equal to pdo prepare sql and stmt all right stmt execute associative array id is equal to how to get here right id and that's pretty much it now we need to get that so first let's use your if statement because we are getting here just one so we don't need to use while user is called to stmt fetch 
and I'm gonna set a default uh, all right so I'm gonna explicitly set it fit as okay it's written associative array and first here user user ID is equal to user user ID remember this is the column name right database column name user name is equal to user name and user email is equal to user email if this name doesn't match with if or this name if not match with the database column name that it will not work right and one more password user user password awesome right now we need to just set a default value right here okay there's no value i'm going to use it here first opening psp tag and closing psp tag in between here echo this is username right username and right here value is equal to opening closing psp tag and echo email user email and right here password value and echo user password all right so here the most important things a lot of people forget this and it usually trick I need to use hidden field right to hold the user ID here we need to use input type hidden and value it's very very important right and the value is echo user id make sense and just close it we need to give it a name with that we can access it okay let's call it update id we could say anyway you can choose any name you want now here also we need to choose something called method post and also action is equal to edit dash user dot php now let's try this there is no error sorry just go back now edit all right undefined method prepare all right we misspelled it prepare i i i should change it to prepare right prepare prepare reload sorry i need to back to the home page click here all right two to three and password that's awesome right if we reload it will return redirect to us to the index page because we can't access this page by get request all right anyway now it's time to update the user first i can we can update it right so and change it change this as we need then click submit now if the any of the field is empty then it will give us an night alert field can't be empty right so let's do this and right below use your update opening psp tag and closing psp tag in between here we have to give name to all the fields right let's give it name here name is equal to okay user underscore name here name is equal to user email and here name is equal to user password all right and this name update id anyway and it is submit and name here is equal to edit me anyway you can choose whatever name you want 
and if we hit on this submit button okay if is set first super global post variable and here edit me underscore me and then if we click on this post request or sorry on this submit button then we're gonna get first the value of the user id right the hidden input first user id is equal to let's see let's say it's super global post request post and here update id and then user name is equal to post username user email is equal to post user email user password is equal to post user password all right i'm gonna check if any of the field is empty then we're gonna show an alert let's say if empty e m p t y right user name or empty user email or empty user password then here echo div and a clutch alert 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 danger all right right here i want to say something called field can't be blank okay else field can't be blank right so here is something very important we use here we use double court already so we can't use inside we need to use your single court all right so now if not that the kit then else and here update the user make sense now let's see if the field is empty then what happen now click edit i'm going to empty click submit all right it says field can't be blank all right there's something wrong with it no worry about it undefined indexed pal on line number eight okay no worry about it for now and here cannot be blank and line number eight what is there first val is something called it's post request right so let's change the name to update id to val it will not give us the error anymore val let's see what's gonna happen there reload edit make it empty submit all right there's no error all right make sense now we're going to update the data or update the user for that we need to create another sql statement sql is equal to update users and set user name is equal to let's call it name user email is equal to email and user password is equal to password double or the password right where where user user id is equal to id make sense and the id all right it should be user id okay you wanna we wanna do this in when we bind it first here stmt is equal to pdo 
prepare SQL and then stmt execute execute and here stmt sorry not stmt you need to bind those parameters associative array so first name with user name then email user email then password it called to user password all right and one more thing is user id all right here id is equal to user id all right and that's pretty much it after updating when i just redirect the user to the index page location index dot php that's it now let's try this out first back to home page click edit i want to change this let's say barrick email dot gmail barrick and here okay submit okay here barrick barrick email is updated let's try this one john change it to jen let's say and here also jen i not change the password digit to just let's call it a b c submit all right it's edit success right we make this field empty submit all right field can't be blank make sense here one more things we can do we can use a trim function to make it more reliable right here just cut it trim also here trim and also here right now let's see sorry let's try one more time okay cool let's change it to gen mark at the red gmail.com and if you make it empty but speech then it will also give us this night alert make sense and that's pretty much it and now we are done with this project record it this is actually very simple but it's very important if you can do this project well then i believe you can use video whatever you wanna use all right so let's move on in the next section and there we'll build a real world website i will use video too see you there in this video we're going to set up the project that means the website we're going to build download the attached file on your computer and extract it in htdocs directory right you will get a folder like this block and open the folder with visual studio code or whatever code editor you're using all right here it contains the project for our website so now just flip over to a browser and type localhost slash blog and hit enter all right you'll get like this all right make sure you're running apache and mysql and this is just an html template it is a static web page you could say our website is it's not dynamic right and it has this index page this is the home page here we can search we can navigate by this navigation link or we can navigate different page by this pager here we can view the detail skin by just clicking here but i'm not linking up everything so i'm going to do it manually slash single.html all right this is the view page all right and 
it also had the administration area for this just type here admin backslash admin and this is the admin template right here before accessing we'll authenticate the user here only the admin can access this backend you could say this and we will create a little c image and here you can add new post you can delete post you could edit post right and here also have category category dot html all right here we could visit the comment page here also comment dot html here it's the comment dot html here i have the comment all right and here the username and here the comment and on which post the comment right and if we click delete then it will get deleted to do a whole lot of things in this section so here a lot of new things to learn remember building a real world project always is a challenge it's more than just coding so in this section we are going to build this website so let's start in this video we're going to create database table let's go to localhost slash php my admin and now click on new choose a database name i'm going to choose blog and here i'm going to create a table name category categories actually with two column the first field name is let's say cat underscore id it's type integer length 11 and auto increment and cat title it's type of barker length let's say 255 it's more than enough Sip. Now let's insert dummy categories. First, let's say PHP, second, JavaScript. Go. All right. Now let's create another table named post with eight columns go all right first one is post underscore id type integer length 11 and with auto increment then post title type marker to 55 length next post description type text there's no limit of the length right and then post image here text when i store the image name here right and here post date type of barker and it will be like this to september 2019 then post author type marker right length 255 then post cat id type integer let's say 11 and a very last one post status type worker it's 255 
and default value here sorry here default value as defined and published all right now save it all right somewhere I have some problem here it choose wrong things here should have the length right two five five and now save it now let insert dummy post the first post okay i'm going to just copy from here should i learn php first post title post description let's go to lorem ipsum from here i'm going to copy some dummy text just copy it and paste it right here and post image image name let's say here inside our image folder let's say for php.png php.png and post date let's say to september 2019 post auto let's say john post cat id word and status publish and second post let's copy the title from here copy and paste it each not just killing php and copy the same things paste it here and then here node.js.png i believe they have a picture node.js.png all right then post date let's say 3 september 2019 post author let's call it barrick post cat id 2 and status publish just go all right we have created two tables all right categories and post in this video i'm going to create a reusable component let's start off by creating a folder here includes and inside include folder a file name header dot php and also folder dot php for now i'm going to open index dot html just cut off this part and here recover once includes slash header dot php and i'm going to paste the content in my clipboard all right and scroll down from here i'm going to cut this part all right i'm going to paste it inside this folder and here require once all right includes slash folder dot php and you also need to change the extension index.php all right then this edit user you don't need here i'm gonna just delete it all right here now let's open category.html rename it to dot php and i'm going to cut this part and here require once include slash header dot php and scroll down 
and from here I'm going to from here I'm going to remove this part and here recover once includes slash footer dot php all right and also search dot html same thing here recover once includes slash header dot php and also from here php require once includes slash footer dot php all right and let's change the extension to php right and also for single.html let's change the extension to single.php all right then open it and remove this part okay here recover once include slash header dot php and scroll down right here recover once dirt slash includes slash footer dot php all right that's pretty much it and again open index dot php from here i'm going to cart this part inside this nap element and i'm going to just cart this edge and here let's say recover once include slash navigation dot php and let's create a file here navigation dot php and paste it the content for clipboard and format a little bit all right that's pretty much it and we're done with it now we create a reusable component for our front end all right so we did it for index.php all right just i'm going to copy this and for search.php and right here just paste it and also for single.php all right this part with paste just and also for categories.php all right now let's see if that works reload all right i think everything's fine let's see single.php all right it looks okay then categories dot php or right, it seems good and for source dot php all right it also good all right let's move on and i will see you in the next video